hour is dark and it's hard to see what you are doing here in the ruins and where this will be oh but i know that down to the years i'll look back on this moment and see your hand on it and know you were Testify of the battles you've won. How you were my portion when there wasn't enough. And I'll testify of the seas that we crossed. The waters you Amen, amen. Thank you so much. Amen, amen. Thank you so much to our lovely songbird, Minister Raquel McCarter. I really appreciate that song. The words are very, very touching. And without further ado, good evening once again for tuning in wherever you are as you're listening in on our Berean Zoom, to those who are watching from Facebook Live, and to those who will be watching from YouTube, we want to say thank you. Thank you for being with us um, and sharing with this live experience on and broadcasting it with your friends and your peers on social media. We're honored to have your attention this, this evening, and we pray that the Holy Spirit has moved you in a mighty, mighty way so far. Amen. And thank you to our resident pastor, Pastor T. Ron Wegar, uh, for sharing his virtual pulpit with me. And thank you to our Hill elder in charge, Elder Landry, uh, for your leadership while Pastor has been away. And thank you for our praise team, for Minister McCarter, for breaking up our hearts 
in a, in a special way with your praise and your worship. Uh, this month is Mental Health Awareness Month here in the United States. And the purpose of mental health awareness is to raise awareness and educate the public about mental illnesses, such as the 18.1% of Americans who suffer from depression, uh, schizophrenia, uh, bipolar disorder, uh, the realities of just living in these conditions and strategies for attaining mental health and wellness. Um, it has actually been an, an observance since 1949 that I did not know. And each year, the Mental Health America organization, the same organization that started Mental Health Awareness Month, chooses a theme. Uh, last year and continuing into this year's theme is tool, hashtag tools to thrive. Tools, the number two, thrive. The theme was chosen due to uh, we are living, quote unquote, a time of unprecedented anxiety about a world pandemic. You can find many helpful resources and tools researching the hashtag uh, tools to thrive on social media, on Twitter or Google. And this evening, I thought it would be fitting to touch on some important information we can gather from the Bible as a tool to thrive. Amen. Uh, the sermon tonight is titled, It's the Thought That Counts. So look to your friend or look to your family member or anyone that you know that's tuning in, send them a quick text or message and let them know it's the thought that counts. Pray with me. Please join me in prayer this evening as we worship and fellowship together. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we exalt your heavenly name. The time has come once again to uh, bring our worries and our troubles to you, God. Be with me and use my vessel, O oh Lord, for your divine kingdom. And you know, we do pray. Amen. I was sitting at my dining room table this past weekend having dinner with my wife and our children and our guest who was in town for our church youth experience, Elder Manushka, actually. And when she and our children were conversing, the topic of conversation was Mother's Day for one reason or another. And I wasn't really dialed into the conversation until my daughter mentioned loudly that we forgot to get Elder Manushka's mom a present. And it was kind of it was it was kindly explained to her that although that was a nice gesture to be thinking of someone else's mother for Mother's Day, Elder Manushka accepted that it was her personal responsibility to gift her own mother herself, while reaffirming our daughter that it's the thought that counts. And when she said it, the phrase just kind of stuck with me, both spiritually and logically. And I agree the, the thought of caring for our brother or our sister or a father or a mother or a relative or even someone we don't know is to me an example of a tool that God has given each and every one of us. You know, being sincere, being thoughtful, being genuine, taking initiative and caring for one another human to human just feels like the right thing to do. It feels like God's love and the way we can express God's love to, in his children and in his creations. Believe it or not, the phrase, it's the thought that counts, isn't as old as you may believe or, and, and it has other uses as well. From what I've researched, the proverb is credited to Henry da Van Dyke Jr., who was a professor at Princeton University, who was also a writer and a poet. And Van Dyke coined the aphorism, it is not the gift, but the thought that counts. And we know that he was born in 1852, and he lived until 1933. And uh, note that with as many proverbs, only the latter half of the phrase, it's the thought that counts, is generally quoted. The, the listener is expected to supply the beginning of the proverb himself. The coin term is, it is not the gift, but the thought that counts. So I dug a little deeper and I discovered that Oxford's definition, the informal definition is, of this phrase is it's used to indicate that it is the kindness behind an act that matters, however imperfect or insignificant the act may be. It's the thought that counts. It means that the, importance part, the important part of a gift is the effort, the consideration, and the sacrifice that's put into it. 
whether or not the gift giver has chosen a present that the recipient truly wants or can actually use is of little consequence. The fact that the gift giver thought hard about what he or she thought the recipient would want, went to the trouble and expense of procuring it, and finally gave it to the recipient shows a level of respect and caring that is invaluable. In practice, the phrase, it's the thought that counts is uttered for uh, several reasons. One reason is that the recipient truly appreciates the effort, the consideration and the sacrifice that went into procuring the gift. The second reason is that the gift was a terrible disappointment, such as an article of clothing that doesn't fit. I don't know about y'all, but I've bought my wife <laughs> several articles of clothing that just don't fit. Or it can be food that someone is allergic to. Um, buying someone a strawberry and then finding out after the fact that they're allergic to, to strawberries. Or it could be an item that arrived broken. You ordered this beautiful uh, picture frame and when the picture frame came in the mail, you, you gave it to them on their birthday and they opened up the present and you hadn't checked on the picture frame after you received it and you open it up and it's broken. You know, the, the, it's the thought that counts. It is a sentiment that parents impress upon our children and we in, and when the presents don't live up to their expectations. The sentiment is more important than the physicality. When we interact with each other, we're sometimes unaware if our brothers and sisters in Christ are dealing with a mental illness, a mental disorder, or just having an unhealthy mind. Being aware of mental health can help us achieve great things together and help one another. We have to be careful the way we bear fruit or gifts because it's the thought that counts and their thoughts count too. We can give great gifts in the form of time by simply listening to one another in the form of love by allowing each other to express our feelings and also in the form of kindness by helping. Let someone nearby you know right now it's the thought that counts. We have to also acknowledge that gift giving wasn't was also considered by Jesus as well, and both monetary and with faith. One of the ways Jesus acknowledged gifts and gift giving in the Bible was his example of an experience he had in the temple. One day during his ministry, Jesus uh, sat in the temple and he observed people coming to give money to the temple treasury. And many rich people came and they gave of their abundance, gold and silver, some of which made sure people knew that they were given a lot. Some of y'all know some people like that. But then a poor widow passed by and she reaches into her sack and she pulls out two measly little mites and barely enough money to cause a change in the balance sheet of the treasury. She deposits it nonetheless and then goes her way. And upon seeing this action, Jesus did something that if you or I were around uh, at that time and we were amongst the ranks of Jesus's disciples um, and his faithful few, even we would have probably scratched our heads in confusion and maybe been a little upset about it too. Jesus called his disciples to himself and he said to them, assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than those who have given to the treasury, for they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of poverty put in all that she had, her whole livelihood, found in Mark 12, 43 through 44. Sometimes I get caught up believing that I can't give a lot, and so I don't give at all. What good will $20 do for the church? If I'm being completely honest, sometimes I tell myself it, it won't make a dent, so why give it? If I'm being honest, the issue really isn't with the amount I'm giving. It's because my attitude about giving in general, just like the rich people in the temple who gave and made sure everyone knew about it, I put the focus on myself and not on the needs of others. I'm thinking, what can I do? You know, what, what can I get out of this? Instead of how will this help others? So it, it doesn't matter whether you plan to give a lot out of your abundance or give a little out of poverty, both the small and the big gift will have an impact. 
And perhaps in the end, the greatest impact will be on our hearts as it reaps the emotional rewards of influencing other people's lives. The gift in this parable uh, was about money, but I believe that the gift can be your chance to use your circumstance for someone else's happenstance. I believe your gift could be lis a listening ear for someone near. I believe your gift could be your light to help someone else fight the darkness away and live to see another day. Just turn to your neighbor this evening and say, it's the thought that counts. God also left yeah. us many great yeah. examples in the Bible regarding mental health as well. I, I pulled quite a few Bible verses regarding mental health that I wanted to share tonight. And frankly, I was surprised that there were so many that we can use as tools to relate to mental health awareness. There are always, these are always, um, these are all using the English Standard Version for the purpose of just making it a little easier to understand. Uh, the first verse was, the Lord is the one who renews the mind, found in Romans 12, 2, and restores the soul, found in Psalms, uh, Psalms 23, 3. Romans 12, 1 and 2 goes on to say, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Psalm 23 verses one through six goes on to say, a Psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow and death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff that comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with the oil. My cup overflows. God has given his children a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Found in 2 Timothy verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 7. We have Jesus' promise of peace, of peace, found in John 14, verse 27. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Not, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. We also have his promise of rest, found in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 30 which is one of my favorites. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And of course, there are many scriptural injunctions to fear not and to bring your anxieties to God. Another one of my, of, of my favorites of all time is Isaiah 41 10, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Another great example is Matthew yeah. chapter six, verse 34. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Another one, Philippians right. four. Verses six to seven, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, be, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be no, made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And another one, First Peter chapter five, seven says, casting all your anxieties in, on him because he cares for you. It's the thought that counts. Mental health is linked yeah. to the health of both the body and the spirit. We have a biblical example here in Elijah, whose mental health suffered during his conflict with Queen Jezebel. Elijah fled the country to a place by himself where he wished to die. The Bible says, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, it is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I'm no better than my father's. God dealt with Elijah's physical needs first, feeding him and giving him time to sleep. And God knew his journey was too much for him in his current state. 
So after Elijah had rested and recharged physically, God gave him encouragement, a new purpose, and an assistant. And if, tonight, I wanted to practice a quick exercise with you. If you've ever worn glasses or contacts due to a vision impairment, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. So this is kind of what we, what, we, what we see sometimes, you know? When we take our glasses off, this is how the vision uh, is obscured. And uh, due to this vision impairment, you, you, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say it's difficult to see things for what they really are without some assistance. Yeah. I, I can't get no help in here. I said when your glasses or contacts are removed, something you greatly depend on or should depend on for some of us casual wears, your vision and the future of where you're going or trying to get to becomes cloudy and hard to navigate. I said you begin to feel around right. looking and depending on old places you've been to and reaching for common things that you've grown accustomed to, no longer depending on the foundation and the tools you've been provided. Mental health can feel like this fog that you're looking through right now, like you've awakened from a dream without your seeing eyeglasses and now things have become a lot tougher to navigate through life. And in life, we need our tools to thrive, the helping hand of one another, the guidance of Jesus in our lives so that we can see 2020 of his vision for our lives. It's the thought that counts. Jonah uh, is another example of someone whose mental health was tied to bad choices he made. Jonah wished for death after God spared Nineveh. Jonah 4, 3 states that now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. This desire yeah, yeah. is quite indicative of a depressive state. Leading up to what was Jonah's rebellion against God, he had directly disobeyed the Lord's command, found in Jonah 1, verses 1 to 3. But even after God brought him back in line, his heart was not in tune with God's desires, Rather than marvel at God's mercy and praising him for his grace, Jonah wished to die. Get it realigned with mercy. God is the only way Jonah's depression could ever end. There are many people in the Bible who can, we can say were likely dealing with some sort of mental health issue. In some cases, outside spiritual forces have a direct effect on mental health as well. King Saul. King Saul suffered distress as a result of an evil spirit uh, tormenting him. Found in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. He only found relief when David played an instrument for him and the spirit from God came on Saul. Another example of uh, demonic related mental illness is the man from uh, the Gerasenes who lived naked among the tombs and he constantly cried out and he cut himself. After Jesus cast the demons out of him, the man was in his right mind. The spiritual battle had been won and the man's mental health was restored. The Bible gives some guidelines on attaining and retaining good mental health that we just have to follow. We have a description of the healthy thought life in Philippians 4, 8. And it says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything yeah. worthy of praise, think about these things. It's the thought that counts. We have Jesus' example of taking breaks from the business of life to focus on spiritual matters as well. Luke chapter 5, 16 says, but he would withdraw to, de to desolate places and pray. A desolate place is just something empty. It's a, a place that's not attractive. Uh, there's no people. There's just nothing pleasant about it. And he called his disciples to do the same. Mark 6, uh, ch chapter 6, verse 31 says, And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. We have Paul's acknowledgement that physical exercise is also profitable. Uh, 1 Timothy 4, 8 says that, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way. And as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Self-care, both physical and spiritual, is a necessity and a tool to thrive. It's the thoughts that count. God, oh, is, 
to the brokenhearted, and he saves the crushed in spirit. Psalms 34, 18. He works all things together for the good of his children. Romans 8, 28. The testing of faith produces endurance and maturity. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Mental health struggles, while they are difficult, are not pointless. The Bible clearly shows how God can and does use them for his glory. It's the thought that counts. Let us pray. Amen. Father God, thank you. Thank you for all that you continue to do for your people. During this Mental Health Awareness Month, Lord, we're asking that you mold our thoughts. We're asking that you, you cleanse our mind. We're asking that you make our burden light. We're praying, God, that those dealing with mental health, dealing with mental disorders, dealing with mental diseases, we're asking, God, that you be the best friend and the best partner and the best parent to those particular individuals. When they seem or feel like all those hope is lost and they want to throw in the towel, such as Jonah did, and they want to call it quits, such as Elijah did, we're asking God that you be the small voice of reason for those individuals. We're asking that you just watch over your flock. Be the good shepherd that you know you can be. In your name, Jesus, yeah. in your son Jesus' name, we do pray this evening. Amen. 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 At this time, you can unmute your devices. We want to hear from you. We're going to be moving into our Hour Power Plus segment. And we want to know your thoughts. We want to know how you feel after hearing this word. We want to know uh, what your, your takeaway was and what your thoughts are. At this time, please share. Good evening, Elder. Uh, okay, thank you I, so much for your message. Uh, Elder Long, did you have before? It was other Manusha. Uh, that was Manuska. Yes, it was other Manuska speaking. Um, and since uh, you can't, it'll be a little. Um, self-righteous of you to ask people to mute, unmute themselves and clap for you. I'm going to ask you before I say what I was going to say that you were blessed by this word uh, to unmute your devices and um, show other McCarter your appreciation um, for his word. Uh, powerful word, powerful word. Amen. <laughs> this is Lauren. This is Lauren. Amen. 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 Um, I wanted to, I wanted to say that, um, you definitely spoke to me tonight personally, um, because like I said, I've been struggling. And the last sentence of your sermon is actually really what hit home most for me, that though you may be struggling, that it can still be used for God's glory because the enemy has a way of making us feel that the particular mentally, when you're struggling mentally and you feel like your mind is unstable, that there is something inherently wrong or there is some inherent deficiency that God is shying away from as a result of what you're struggling with. So um, that was a reminder that I personally needed, so. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Elder Lauren. Hey there, Elder. Okay. <laughs> I don't know when I'm on or off, but anyway, uh, the thoughts. Yeah, I wanted to say something about thoughts. Your thoughts are very important to God. Sometimes we say things with our mouths, but our our thoughts are far from what we're saying. So it is the thought. God reads our thoughts. He knows our motives, everything behind what we do. So yeah, it's important to have good thoughts <laughs> and do good works. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I think uh, yeah. this El Elder Proche. <laughs> Yeah, so it was a powerful word, Elder. I think I think um, you know a lot of times we don't have anything but but your thoughts, 
and uh, you gave us a lot of background support scriptures uh, that 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 supported your uh, message. And a lot of times, uh, when you you never know when you when when you when you actually make a difference in someone, when you reach out to them, whether uh, phone or either just just physically. And like you say, you never know what just the thought means when you when when a person realized that you were actually thinking about me, you were considering me at that particular time, you were actually had me on your mind or or whatever I was going through, you didn't know. But but at that particular time there may be miles separating us, but you but you but just just the thought. And a lot of times that means that means so much to people. And, and something I learned too about, uh, you know, we talk to ourselves all the time, and 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 and, and when we have these scriptures, that was a good support mechanism. That these things we can reach back on when we're going through things. Sometimes we have to change our conversation that we're having with ourselves, and 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 if we can reach reach out and, and recall or, or or some of these scriptures that would give us support. And it will actually change the conversation you're having with yourself, which could actually change uh, uh, your 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 attitude for whatever situation you, you you're, you're in. So I so I thank you for those scriptures most of all. And uh, God, yes, God, God did bless you. Yeah, praise the Lord, man. Amen. Amen. Powerful message. Powerful message. Uh, and, and and timely and, and needed in these, in these tough times that we're living in. Because a lot of people are being seriously impacted mentally by this pandemic we've been in for the last year plus, and and not even realizing it. But but you know the thing about being a believer is that we know we can always go to God. We can always depend on His grace and His goodness, His love, His mercy, the power and presence of His Holy Spirit in our lives. Because you know. The old folks used to say, it's all right to talk to yourself, just don't start answering, you know, <laughs> having that single conversation. So, so you know, we're going to have these thoughts and we need to talk about this stuff. And, and we don't even associate it with a mental, impact, the mental impact that it's having on our lives. We just, old folks used to call it thinking out loud, you know, so, uh, but, you know, we have to understand that there is an enemy out there. These demons are trying any and everything to separate us from the love of God. And that's why I love the scripture, you know, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Because on our own, we can't do it. We just can't do it. And and one of the things I appreciate about your message, these are things uh, Black folk don't like to talk about. So it's good uh, to to have this type of message tonight and this type of discussion. So praise the Lord for you, young elder. Yes, sir. Thank you, Elder Landry. You are right. You're right about everything you said, and uh, I appreciate everyone's insight. My brother, good evening. Good evening. <laughs> uh, I was truly blessed by your word. Um, came from a different perspective you know I've never heard a message like that in my many years in the church and you know one one thing that uh, struck me is the fact that I don't think our church even uh, deals with mental issues you know many times uh, there are individuals within our church that are struggling and we kind of, we don't see what they're going through and we, and we don't have the means or we don't provide the means to deal with their mental issues. You know, I have a young friend of mine that's a, a gynecologist that um, was struggling with some mental issues and still are today. And um, she's bipolar and every time she felt that she was getting sick, she would leave her surrounding and go elsewhere. You know, until one time it got so bad that um, 
you know, where she went, the, uh, the uh, police actually found her walking the street nude, um, traced his steps, got back to the hotel and found out that she was a medical doctor that had several practices. And eventually, you know, um, things happened, spiraled out of control. She lost her license to practice medicine. And even up until today, it's like um, the church has basically turned their backs on her. Um, I am the only one that she reaches out to. Uh, I would go see her. You know, we talk all the time. You know, just try to keep that connection and try to help her out of the situation that she's in. And hearing that message really touched me, you know, and something that that struck me as well. um, Two weeks ago, I got a phone call from Elder Prochet and his wife, you know, um, and he said, uh, Brother Blake, I haven't heard you on uh, you know, on the prayer line recently. And I said, no, I was on there. I just didn't say anything. But, you know, that meant so much to me. You know, Elder has reached out to me several times, you know, um, to see how I'm doing, you know, uh, to find out if I heard anything from the little baby that I was taking care of that you know, whose father took her away from me and, you know, just to see how I'm coping and how I'm doing. And that means, that meant and means so much to me. And that struck me when I heard your topic is the thought that count. You know, Le Prochet and his wife were thinking about me and they reached out to see how I was doing. And, uh, you know, I can't wait, you know, be honest, I, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I can't wait to, you know, come down to Baton Rouge and to worship with the family, you know, because I feel a part of the family, even though I've never met y'all in person, but I just feel that connection, you know, and I thank God for each and every one of you. I, I, I I thank God for your message. You bless my soul, brother. And uh, man, it's not too late. You're a young brother, man. Consider the ministry. <laughs> you have a gift. You definitely Praise have a gift. Hey, you are part of the family, brother Blake. I don't want anyone to uh, be overlooked tonight when I say that. Um, y'all are all part of our family. And you're right. We can't wait to, to um, fellowship with you in person too, brother. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming. And yeah, so were there any more thoughts? Any thoughts on Facebook? Anyone shared anything? Uh, no, we don't have anything on Facebook. The only thing that um, Sister Adams added, I think she was quoting something that somebody else said. She said, don't let your thoughts be your enemy. Mm. Wow. Mm. Okay. But this time I um, wanted to open up the floor for offering. You know, uh, part of my message, um, it was kind of torn because I didn't want to take away from mental health awareness. Um, But the part of my message about the widow, you know, really um, hits home because I I desire to give more. I desire to do more for my church and uh, we need it. You know, at Berean Seven Day Adventist needs it. We need your help. We need your 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 offering. Uh, this ministry uh, does not come for free. Uh, we have different ways that you can give. If you were touched by this message and you want to sow a special seed to us, you can give your gift to us by mail. You can mail your gift directly to the church at four five 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 Fairfields Avenue, here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, seven zero eight zero two or you can give online. You can visit our website. We have a beautiful, clean website that's easy to navigate. You go to www.bereanbatonrouge.com. And uh, at the top, there uh, 
there's a there's a section uh, that has three lines. When you click it, there's an option to choose online giving, and you can uh, log in to the uh, website, or you can online give as a gift as a guest. And everything that you do for us, no matter how small the gift is, no matter how great the gift is, uh, it's being used for the greater good. It's being used to win souls for Christ. It's being used so that we can continue to broadcast uh, every week, uh, twice a week. It's being used so that we can do the work of the Lord. You know, at the end of the day, it's the thought that counts. So at this time, we're going to end uh, our service with a, a benediction. And we're wishing everyone well. We're wishing everyone safety during the storms. Uh, we're wishing everyone, uh, if you are being of a service or a help to someone else, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, your, your gifts and your, your time don't go unnoticed. Let us pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you so much for this fellowship experience that we had tonight, Lord. It's been truly a, an honor and a blessing to be used as a vessel for your divine word. I ask God that you be with everyone's heart this evening. Allow the words that have been spoken tonight to resonate with someone. Allow them to teach or tell a friend about something that they learned this evening so that they can spread the word of your gospel. Allow our thoughts to be molded by you and show us that it's the thought that counts. In the name we do pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. You all have a good night. Thank you for tuning in on Facebook and YouTube. We appreciate your attention and your time. Everyone have a great evening. Thank you. Good night.